Yeah, let's Don't. do it. <laughs> I was sorry. I was looking at the actual stream and I got sidetracked because I saw Jared there. And then I was like, just going to start talking to Jared. Because <laughs> Jared, Tom and I have been having a great conversation um, in our little text thing that we talk in about um, everybody's talking about like podcasting 2.0. And mm -hmm. then I swear to you, this is like veiled cryptocurrency thing. But I mean, <laughs> it's it's a little bit more than that. And so I can't wait to like, we'll all be in meet space next week. So I get to see Jared and we'll talk about this and maybe record a little something. Some, uh, oh, there you, there you if go. If we have time, if we're not just stuffing our face with burgers and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, Flow Riders. We were, we were laughing behind the, the screen at all kinds of ridiculousness. So, so we're a little punchy today. We're at a new, a new, new time just for this week. Feeling a little punchy today, yeah. but that's okay. We're, we're going we're gonna to get through it. I, well, that, that and the fact that like I'm slightly sleep depraved and a little bit <laughs> sore from digging around in my face yesterday. So, it, yeah, it's going to be a great day. Man, you and Phil uh, crushed the, um, the creative lot thing like i was in the shower so i wasn't typing much but yeah it's something i've i've been using express since yeah. it was called post originally and then they changed it to spark and then they yeah. changed it to spark post and then it came full circle came to express so i've been using express for a long time and it's funny because like everybody mostly knows me from canva but i swear mm -hmm. to you i picked up canva because alicio asked me a question and i didn't know the answer so i got canva and i was like oh i hadn't touched canva for like you know five years at that point and i was like oh camera grew up you know yeah but it's it's weird because now uh, I felt like Adobe sat on that for a minute, and then they're like, "Uh oh, we better put our, you know, remind folks that we're Photoshop. Let's let's not get, let's not kid ourselves." Yeah. <laughs> so they came back with a vengeance. It's very beautiful. They did. I I mean, I I I will. I make no. I mean, <laughs> I have been using Canva from like the you know from the get go all the way through. I'm not a graphic designer, but I was really amazed at what Adobe Express was able is is and was able to offer, and and their free level is also i think a lot more robust than canva's free level so um i don't know i'm a big i'm a big believer in let's give everyone tons of options there's gonna be different people that are gonna right. use different tools but i think that express just has a lot to offer and i and phil is so great so if yeah if you haven't checked that out yet and you're and you're hanging out with us here um today tomorrow and thursday we're doing three 
um, sessions. I'm just, I'm just the the question person hanging out with Phil on those streams, but he's been going through how to do um, all kinds of different video graphics using Adobe Express uh, at the free level. So you don't actually have to have a paid account, although you can certainly upgrade if you want to. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a really great session and we have a lot of really amazing workshops and challenges planned this year. So I'm just really, I'm super excited to see everyone jumping on and learning all new things. This is like our year to, to like learn all the things and be incredible yes. at all of this stuff. I think that's the hardest challenge, right? It's very easy to get, you know, complacent and do things and yeah. um, not realize that, you know, if you it just, oh, it's working, so I don't want to mess with it. Oh, I, I understand, so that. I understand that. that mentality, but that yeah. mentality is horrible because while you're not messing with it, somebody is running right past you and you won't even know until you look oh, up yeah. because you've been focusing on the fact that everything works and that therein yeah. lies a problem. Right. You yeah. know, um, there's people that really go to the gym every day and then wonder how come they're unhealthy, because there is a point where you get into your gym routine where you're just sort of exercising and you're not challenging your muscles anymore. And then yeah. it just doesn't do anything. You might, I mean, could you plateau? Right. That's where that terminology yeah. comes from. And that, that yeah. works in all myriad things, eating, exercising, working, whatever. All right, so let's dive into this. Flow Riders, you guys know the deal. I do see a couple of new folks in here. Uh, we'd like welcome, to welcome, welcome you guys for showing up to a live taping of the flow. Uh, and this is going to be good, right? Uh, the reason why I wanted to cover this topic is a question was posited to us uh, last week about what do you do in public speaking or podcasting as a way of dealing with the um monsters? And I have a whole bunch to say about that. Why? Because I've been a professional speaker probably since high school uh in high school i was always the mc for everything of course i was a a rap musician for a minute did lots and lots of concerts pretty right much back. i gotta every, look up some videos every <laughs> there was no videos back then right back oh, then video cameras, were, video cameras were a bank but it's funny pretty much every major hip-hop group you could think of from say the late 80s to early 90s i opened up for a bunch of them including jazzy jeff and the fresh prince and no he ain't smacked me because i would beat never mind <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just have a lot of experience with it. And I thought I could just lean into my experience and kind of help you with some, because I think the solution is easier than most people think. And yep. it's, yeah, I won't, I don't want to spoil any, I don't want to spoil any beans. So here's what you're going to do. <laughs> spoilers, spoilers. If you have any questions, by all means, drop those in the comments, throw a little cute colon so that we can find it. I'm going to pull a pop out, uh, chat thing right quick so that I can see it on my big old screen. And then we're going to get into stuff, Katie. And by all means, I know this is something that you talk about uh, or want to get better at. So you'll be helpful because you will actually have some of the same questions these Ken folks will have. And yeah. then let's let's get it twisted. So we're going to count it down and then we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Let me take a deep breath. Always got to do the woosah. This is funny. Wait, I want y'all to remember this thought. Anybody who's watched this flow recording, you see me do this every week. Every single week you see me do that. And now you're about to know why. Here we go. Count them down in five, four. Aloha, Flow Riders. Welcome to the show, Graham. I am Doc Rock, your community manager for Ecamm Live, along with my awesome co-host. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Fox. <laughs> when I say awesome co-host, you can't go, hey everyone, I'm Katie Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I was punchy before we started recording, so I, now my punchiness is down. My level is down. I think, yeah, no. I, think I scared you with today's topic, so let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We're going to dive in. We want to get to this one because there's probably a lot to take in. Uh, yep. If you are at home playing at home along in the recorded version, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and I kind of want you to grab a pen and paper if possible. If not, please commit these to memory. They're not that difficult. As a matter of fact, you can follow along and try some of the things that we do when we do them. Here's why. Today, we're going to talk about 
hiccups like not to, like that but when you're talking when you are a speaker when you are a podcaster a lot of people get very concerned about their vocal fluidity right mm -hmm. i say verbal fluency because it's the right terminology but we want to be extremely careful not to confuse this with some sort of speech speech see i can't even say it speech pathology <laughs> i am not a speech pathologist i am not a psychologist i am yeah i am a doctor and i play one on tv but not that kind of doctor i'm the doctor <laughs> of rock you know, like the king of rock, there is none higher. Suck it in. Sorry. Anyway, um, so no, if there is a there is something about this test, though, that I will say that it is generally medically accepted that if you're doing a fast association test, which is something that we're going to talk about as a way to get better as a podcast or a public speaker, if you happen to come to a number less than 17, you probably should talk to a doctor. That's just something mm -hmm. that has been globally accepted along long lines. And I remember this because when going through doctors with, you know, some of my family members about Alzheimer's, that was one of the tests that they gave them. And I was sitting there playing along because I'm used to doing it as a radio guy. Okay. So anyway, Katie, what are your questions about verbal fluency? And I'm going to use that fancy word because that's what I know it as. But people, again, <laughs> this is not medical. So don't ask me medical questions. <laughs> no medical questions here. Um, I mean, I think for me, it comes down to a lot of questions around what kinds of things can I do to make my presentation skills, both in live video as well as, you know, just in person doing events, better. I I'm well aware, and I just said it, I'm well aware that now that I use Descript <laughs> and go through the transcripts on a regular basis, I don't say a lot of ums, so great. I don't say a lot of likes, but I say, you know, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, all, like, over and over and over again. And I'm always removing them later in Descript. Now I'm going to speak slowly because I'm watching what I'm saying. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I practice a lot. I am now live a lot or recording videos or sharing videos or talking. And I come from an acting background, so I very comfortable on the stage. And like you, I have a, a background in speaking publicly, but I still struggle with, with tripping over my words, talking too fast, talking too slow. So yeah, what are the, what are some of the things other than just practicing that we can all do to get better at how we speak and how fast or slow and what we say so that we don't have any of those extra words thrown in or tripping over words? All right, so this is a fantastic question. Number one, I just literally watched you, not literally, I, I just did that, I did that, yeah, I know. <laughs> I just watched you do it, and you did exactly what you're supposed to do, and don't even realize that you're doing it, but the reason why you're doing it is because you are live more, talking more, speaking more, maintaining meetings of importance more, and things of that nature. So you kind of made your question as follows how can i eat six thousand cakes a day and not get fat you know the answer <laughs> is practice the answer yeah. is absolutely practice you just don't realize how you're practicing so what i want to do is help people mix the practice up so that way it doesn't become monotonous and seem so task oriented but yeah. part of the reason why you are getting so much better from before is because you're just doing it more. And at the end of the show's over, people, that's it. If you really want to be verbally fluent, go live more, record yourself more, practice, 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 practice. And there's ways to practice without practicing. Well, how would you do that? Hey, Nan, how are you doing? I'm going to press the FaceTime button. Can you please put yourself on? Now, this is Nan, right? So remind her to put her head in the middle of the picture and not the top of the picture. Because <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what old people do in the face. Do you know that just FaceTiming your homies will make you better at this? Do you know that doing a, a video message or Instagram lives with your friends, you know, not even everybody else can see, like a private situation, popping up in the Discord and just talking to people in a group, running Zoom meetings with your friends, all of the above will get you better at speaking on camera. Mm -hmm. And people dismiss that because everybody wants to show up on camera like, I, I'm Alex Johnson. Today I'm going to talk to you about Ecamm Live Advanced. No, don't be Alec Johnson. 
I love you. <laughs> we love you, Alec. <laughs> <laughs> That's his natural personality. So he's not doing anything different. That is, I sit in meetings with him all the time. We talk all the time. That is his actual demeanor. Yeah, that's different. Like you, you have to be bored with that demeanor. I think <laughs> that level of calm. I don't know about that. I'm way too psychotic for that. But yes, having, you know, simple conversations will get you better. One of my favorite tools I tell everyone in my personal training group is video journal. What mm -hmm. is that? Do you remember TLC trading spaces, right? They gave them a camera so they can, I hope my neighbor is not jacking up my room. I hope they didn't make any bright colors and purples or put like Paisley stickers everywhere, things of that nature, right? That video journaling alone, when no one has to see it, but you will make you better. Right? Yeah. And forcing uh, yourself to actually watch it. So it's one thing to do it and doing it will certainly help you practice, but you know, there are so many, I said it again, you know, there are so many people out there who record a video and I'm guilty of this. And then they're like, great, I did it. I practiced. I went live. I did it. I practiced. But there is something about listening to it, watching it, seeing what you like and don't like, asking a friend to review it and give them feedback, you know, give their feedback back to you. I, I think it really does make a difference in actually forcing yourself to consume your own content when you're a guest on a show, all of that stuff is great practice in doing it, but even better practice in actually watching it and seeing what you like and what you don't like and figuring out how you can make those changes to the things you don't like. So here, you know, it's so good. This is really cool. I was just looking at the chat real quick and like, wow, we got, we got Natalie all the way from South Africa. And it's funny because I've been dealing with the rain this whole time. <laughs> so we was talking about the rain in SA. So yes, now I, I feel, I feel for you because I've been dealing with the rain. Uh, here's another uh, fantastic tip. As you're doing this and you're, you're, you're talking and you're trying to get everything out. One of the things that I find to me has been my absolute best is I study a wide range of topics. I absolutely love football round. I actually, even as an American, love football round more than I love football <laughs> oblong. I love baseball, but I also, I love F1. I love cooking, coffee, music, movies, old movies, things of that nature. If you happen to be bilingual, you already have a large level of verbal fluency. So when I was learning Japanese, there is a typical thing in learning a foreign language where you just memorize a whole bunch of words. Memorizing a whole bunch of words will never get you verbally fluent in another language. For us podcasters or live streamers or public speakers, even learning the term of art for that particular echelon of, you know, content creation is also verbal fluency because you now have to learn compression, EQ, mic placement, um, breathing techniques, you know, posting, editing levels up levels down like all myriad types of thing right frequencies microphone frequencies things of that nature so yeah. in watching content and repeating some of this content out loud like just reading an article about compression on your say your mixer and reading it out loud will allow you to get better at discussing these things when it comes up yeah. right so you won't talk about that thing. You know what it is because you read it. But if you yeah. read it and say it out loud, reading aloud, especially on a wide variety of topics, will really help you. So for yeah. the kids in the chat that are here for the live recording and people play it along at home, yeah, just say, say this out loud right now or write this in the chat real quick. How many books a month do you read? Be honest. And in, in Sports Illustrated, kind of sort of don't count. I mean, like... Time Magazine don't count. Like, how many actual books do you read in a month? Please confess. I'm actually curious. Now, Katie, I know you're an avid reader, right? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I think I'm around four or five, depending on what I'm... Good Lord! Depending on what I'm consuming. I, on average, I tend to read somewhere around 80 or 90 books in the year. So that, what does that come wow. to? I'm so bad at math. 
Uh, but that's a mi- again, that's a mix of different, and I, that is inclusive. I read. I have little kids, and so I read out loud to them every night. And we're now we're flowing through like all of my favorite, you know, kids chapter books and young adult chapter books at this point. So I do count those as ones. But I would say my favorite to do. So definitely answer this question. We'd love to know. But while you're thinking about it, if you do like to read, and even if you're not reading a ton right now. Reading Dr. Seuss books or kids books out loud is really great practice. I went through this whole phase of just like enjoying doing that with for my children. And it got me thinking, it became almost a game because a Dr. Seuss book has all of these rhyme, it rhymes obviously all the way through. And it's got all of these like very complicated non-words in it. And so if you can read that out loud with personality and character and not trip over any of those words. It takes a bit. It took me probably reading the same book, you know, four or five times before I could read it to the kids, make them laugh, not trip over my words. And it, it's, it's a great accomplishment. I got to the end of it. And I was like, I'm awesome at this. And it, a lot of them I'd even memorized after a point, but it, I think it's a really great, super easy trick to get up and running quickly because those Rhyming books have a cadence to them. They have a flow to them, but you can still add in your own personality. So, and they're, I mean, whether you own them yourself or you can just grab them at your local library they're re- or find them even online to be able to read, but they're really easy to get your hands on and a really low lift, quick way to practice just how you sound and how you can play with the levels of your voice, play with it with a mic, record it if you want, but it was a <laughs> fun thing for me to try. I thought I thought you were going to go, how many levers you core? Play with it a mic. Play with it with the mic and rice. <laughs> Play with it with the mic and rice because it's twice as nice. I thought you were literally going to go into a Susian, a Susian. I'm not that love. good. <laughs> I'm not that go good. Into a full Susian flow. All right. So yeah. listen, here's the thing that's funny. I, I am so glad this happened in a way and I was prepared for this to happen. Nobody really answered. You know why nobody really answered? Because they don't. Let's be dead honest oh, with you. Oh, come I on, pre- everyone. Reading is no, so great. I, I, appreciate the, I appreciate the honesty because th- if you don't, then this is why you're having a hard time speaking. Mm-hmm. You just want. Now, here's the thing. When you were a kid and you were starting to develop into so that dating range, right? So let's put you somewhere between, say, like 14 and 22. One of the common things for dating in that era is just watching movies right and maybe it's different now because you know movies not just good as they were before let's be honest but because we went to the movies all the time we were constantly exposed to lots and lots of different ways of speaking and quick quippy rom-com quips you know especially our generation of the movie that we're watching in your show right they were all very quippy and fast and whatever and i feel like super dialogue Yep. When I was in the highlight of my dating game, I was super quick with the gift. And it was because I watched all of those movies with my roommate. I had a female roommate, so I watched all the rom-coms with her and her homies, right? We had girls night, sit around in our robes and watch, you know, <laughs> random uh, John Cusack movies. Yes. And Jason, yes. J- Jason Bateman, you know, was big oh, time. Yeah. Uh, uh, Christian Slater was big time, you know, in those oh, days. Yep. And so when, to this day, I will watch the living crap out of a Sorkin joint. Sorkin stuffs will get you good. Now, if you watch your favorite Sorkin thing, one of the things you always say is nobody quick to answer that fast. No real situation with a bunch of people (laughs) are that quick. I beg to differ. I think my friends are because we all watch that sort of Sorkian documentary. And I think we talk like that in general. We're all really, really fast. Right. Sit around with a bunch of retired radio DJs. We're quick as hell. (laughs) You know what I mean? So it's kind of fun and it's hilarious. I know one of my other homies is a super avid reader. Like she brags about, uh, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to go better. I'm going to the book sale. So (laughs) if if you happen to be around to watch Diana yesterday on Kirk stream, talking about a book, there became a section where Kirk told Diana, please read a passage from your book. Mm-hmm. Yo, she read that joint like a fifth grade librarian. She did. Because Diana even told us in her book, in the pre the preface of preface, in the whatever, in the preface to her book, she even told us about re, you know, reading ad nauseum per se. And so it was part of her conversation. And that's what makes her such a good presenter. 
right? People don't want to hear that because they swear they don't have time. Bro, you can do audio books and when you get the part you like, just repeat it out loud. Run it back and repeat it out loud. But the more knowledge you put in the melon, the much better you would be at speaking extemporaneously. And I always know who I'm talking to when people say, well, why do you use such big words? They're not big if you read. It's a common word, right? If you only talk to a circle of friends, and this is going to hurt some of y'all, if your circle of friends conversates at a fifth, sixth grade level just because it's comfortable, you will fall into that trap. Yeah. What in a place like where I live, and Johnny would probably understand this too because he's a he's a second generation or any of us just second generation kids, when we go back to speak English in the home with our parents that are Esau, we tend to make our conversations a little bit more elementary in order to let, in order to let your, your parents or your grandparents follow along and be part of the conversation, part of the family and fully understand that's just the way it is. You have to go out of your way to step out of that and go step in the liquid, meaning go find a bunch of law school kids <laughs> that you all friends with to hang out with them too, so that you can also have that level of elevated, you know, listening and speaking, right? Yeah. Um, it's just one of those really, really weird things. So increase the amount of stuff that you read, read out loud whenever possible, watch movies with incredible dialogue. When you hear uh, a lovely word inside of a dialogue, uh, if you hear the word sycophantic, you know, and you're like, I don't really know what that means. And you look that up and you like it, put that in your vocabulary, start working with that. Learn how to say things like 5,100 ways, right? So yeah. I'm going to get into some other exercises after that, but I just wanted to see if you had any, any questions at this point. No questions, but, but I will give a pro tip from someone who is working on this. So I'm by no means a, a professional at it. But one thing that I always do is I, and you will all see this on a regular basis. If you watch any of the streams that I participate in, by and large, the mass majority of live streams and video podcasts and video work that I'm doing right now, I'm with a partner. So right, I'm with Doc, I'm with Paul, I'm ha- like, I, I have someone else on the stream with me. I am doing that because I find it much easier to be able to help people and to shine and to speak more clearly when I have someone that I can bounce ideas and questions back and forth with. I just find that to be generally easier. In the times where I need to be by myself, I'm giving, you know, a presentation or a talk or I'm preparing for, you know, an on the stage uh, presentation at a physical event, I will practice with someone else with me in the chat. So I have now taken this, um, this principle to me where I will, as I'm preparing or even if I'm recording my video that I'm going to submit and it's just me, I'll have my best friend sit on Ecamm interview just in the corner and I'll have her you know, ask questions or contribute back and forth so that it's a banter. And once we've done that a couple of times, then I feel much more confident and capable of recording that solo. A lot of the reason that I do that isn't because I don't know what to say or I haven't planned it out or I'm even worried about being on camera or in person by myself. A lot of it is that when I'm back and forth and I'm in this snappy, like what we just talked about with movies and some of these other experiences, I speak a lot faster. But when I'm giving a presentation one-on-one, I need to slow down. And sometimes having someone else there makes me feel a little bit more comfortable and slows me down, even if they're not saying anything. So I I would say that if you you are that person or that's the thing that you're struggling with is presenting by yourself, practice with other people, even if the end result is that you're going to be by yourself. Having someone else there, whether they're in the chat, whether they're calling in as an interview guest, whether you're practicing it and have a back and forth is going to help you get more comfortable with slowing down and feeling more confident and laughing off some of the mistakes that you make and really finding your own voice, I think. So, you know, I would say I agree with everything Doc just said. And I think probably even my, I guess my next question that would follow up with that point is how do you find your own style? Because I think that what you know, everything you just said, Doc, is really relevant and super helpful information, but you definitely have a very set style, right? So you're even the terminology and some of the language that you're using is going to, you know, resonate more with certain people than it will with others. So like, but you've embraced that, that's your personality, that's your teaching style. And I think it's really important for doing live videos. So how do people figure out 
you know, what their style is, what their you know cadence is, how they're going to be able to express themselves through video. Right, you guys are going to love the answer to this. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Here's how you find your style. Stop looking for your <laughs> style. Just talk. <laughs> you already have a style. You were born the way you are. Very true. Like trying to add some flair or whatever. Here, okay, I may have told this story to the my my regular group, my personal group, but I don't know if I've told this to the flow riders. When I was in radio, we had to do what's called an air check in order to get your slot, right? I never really did an air check. I got my slot by accident. I was a, I was a, a intern that hung out at the station, and normally what I did was I edited commercials because you guys know I'm a computer nerd. I was really good at editing commercials on computer. Before we edited commercials with a giant one inch tape, like le legit cut and tape sections together. So I was learning how to convert what we had in our regular edit bay into my computer situation. So I would drag my whole computer in, set it up in the audio room, and I'm over there working on, you know, commercials. There was a concert that came in that everybody wanted to go to, and they were like, hey, intern, run the box. Don't crack the mic. That's when you turn the mic on and say, hey, everybody, you're listening to KIKFM, right? You're not like, a real person, you're an intern. Yeah, Don't <laughs> exactly. crack the mic, just play the songs on the list, play the commercials on the list, and back then, you put the commercials in, like, look like an eight-track tape. You put it in the cart machine, you put yeah. the music in the cart, just play the list and don't screw nothing up. Of course, in the middle of that, something happens in Hawaii where it required cracking the mic, and I did it, and I did it effortlessly, and <laughs> My my boss is like, I'm going to put you on nights for a little bit and then let you, you know, build up your skill. And then after, you know, you'll always do coverage whenever somebody needs to not be here. And that was bad. So that's how I got in. But about halfway through, he was like, you know, everybody else has air checks on deck that we go through once every couple of months just to see how you're progressing. So I'm going to need you to do air checks. And I said, you know. I don't really know how to do that because I didn't do Columbia School of Broadcasting or any of the other stuff that, you know, some of the other guys did. And my old my old boss told me, yeah, you know what? I kind of want to punch all of them in the face <laughs> because here's what happens. Today, like any other day, I'm in my I'm in my groove, right? This is just how I am. For the most part, this is me all the time. But when I have a bad day, I still sound like this. Why? Because <laughs> I'm not changing to be on the show. I'm not going, yeah. hey, listen, everyone, today is the special day and we're gonna get out and talk to <laughs> Kenny Fox from ECAM. That works perfectly fine until Karen pisses me off and I gotta show up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't show up if you're trying to do that crap. So I can't stand when people do that. So don't try to find a style, just talk the way you talk. Now, Caleb brought this up and I wanna make sure that I cover this because I think it's hyper important. Caleb brought this up because like some of you may have been confused by the title, Caleb went to the sort of the medical side and they said, what about people who have a speech impediment? Mm -hmm. I kind of do actually. Um, what happened was after my stroke, I definitely would call the wrong words at the wrong time. And sometimes I'll blank on words. I know exactly what it is. I could have said mm -hmm. it 17 times in the same conversation and I get to it to the next time. And then I'll be like, um, you know, uh, the dude from Miami, um, camera junkie, right? I'll do that. It'll, it'll just go in my head. Right. Mm -hmm. And thus I never had that happen until after my stroke just happens. You know what? Don't care. I'll just do it. Like everybody thinks it's funny when I blank, right. <laughs> or Keely or Paul or somebody will answer my blanks for me and I'm just run with it. Like I don't even freak out over that. Yeah. So I also remind myself that my goats, and I brought this up yesterday, Big E, Q-Tip, Method Man, Kendrick Lamar, Sam Smith, right? They all have speech impediments and they are like the goats. Kendrick Lamar is a massive stutterer, but you would never know that when Kendrick busts out one of his complex verses. Yeah. Just like we don't hear British in certain singers when they sing, a lot of people that have those sort of uh, impediments go away when they try to sing or act or perform. And so it's kind of mind blowing, but the brain just does weird stuff like that. So that I, I really don't want to get too far in, but I want to remind you that 
it's okay. You might just let it, yeah. you see, I just did it. You might just have to let it be. And don't think that your voice sounds funny to us. Your voice always sounds funny to you because it's resonating in that melon. If you have a melon like myself or Fulgens, it's completely different than what comes out. We have yeah. lots of room for res resonance. So yeah, yeah don't, I think don't let it twist. I think it's a really important point. And I think really what the, the heart of it goes back to, which is what certainly you doc talk about all the time. And we've talked about a lot on this podcast is, is really a matter of passion and a matter of confidence. So, you know, really embracing who you are, knowing that you have value to give and that you have a passion and a reason behind the projects that you take on and the things that you're doing, especially in the video and live streaming space is hugely important. And if you're able, which you should, and you should push yourself to be able to focus on that passion and on the end user, then tripping over words here and there, forgetting, you know, some, what you need to say and taking a moment to stop and find it is always okay. <laughs> it's like, it is always okay because you are delivering value and you are helping your audience. And if you keep that in mind and you keep that focus and you, and you continue to do it, you will build that confidence so that it is always okay. And know this as someone who was not okay with it, who came from a background of, you know, being on stage in the theater where you couldn't screw up a line. You needed to memorize your lines. You needed to deliver live video. And even tutorial videos are not like that. They are, they are expecting you to have a level of authority and, and personality and authenticity that is very, very different than what you are seeing from a celebrity acting in a movie or someone acting on stage or what we all expected from business professionals even five, 10 years ago. So I think it's really important that we all embrace that we have value to give, find those projects that bring you passion, and then the rest of it will come. It's not always gonna be perfect, but you, you hopefully at the end of it are going to be giving people value. Otherwise, don't do it. <laughs> Just right. really right. don't now, do it. This is, this is really good. Uh, Nat brings up a great portion, of great comment in the chat about mm -hmm. you know getting used to your voice is a big thing and i say no not i beg the dither don't get used to it dither did <laughs> see don't, why would we talk about Daddy. it today when i'm flubbing <laughs> yeah don't get used to it accept it Call, accept it. it is yeah. it's raining where we live it's wet outside we can't do jack about that so we just run with it it's yep. it's it's like rain or snow where Katie is. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> it's just, is what it is. Move on, right? Yep. When I think of people with horrible voices that turned it into fame, Gilbert yeah. Godfrey. Gilbert and Godfrey. I have to eat another one of these stinking crackers. Everybody yep. that has a kid during the Aladdin phase, you know that voice. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I think of uh jennifer tilly yeah and, and the bride of chucky and many other she has one of the most horrible uh fran drescher uh mm -hmm. but you know what they did they turned it into just their like personality magic. they, they let magic. it define them yeah exactly <laughs> they're magic Gretchen said fred drescher right when i said <laughs> fred drescher so yeah <laughs> thank you thank you and and speaking of lovely voices, someone I can listen to all day long, Sally just popped up in the chat. Hey, and Sally. Sal Sally's voice is a mix of this just general, like Aussie greatness with her laugh. And the yeah. thing that I love so much about Sally, besides the fact that we're diehard purple fans, is she laughs constantly. And in some people, that's irritating because they're faking it. She ain't faking. This is just Sally. Sally, she sent me a voicemail yesterday and she's laughing. Like, I yeah. swear to you, she laughs while she yells at her kids. Like, if you don't do your homework, I'm gonna come in here and slap the crap out of you. <laughs> like, I'm pretty well, sure the, she's, la she's laughing when she's yelling at her kids. <laughs> the reality too is that the things that you don't like about yourself, whether it's your voice or, you know, how you look, et cetera, someone else wishes they had. So yes. you just need to deal with it. Like I. You need to just deal with it. I, I know that that's crappy for everyone to hear, but you do. I, 
whether it's, you know, I, I've had years of my life where I hate the gap between my teeth. And I've had dentists who have told me that supermodels pay to have a gap between their teeth. So I think it's, it's really, right? Cause it's differentiating. Yeah. So I'm sure that it comes down to that with, you know, with your voice, with your hair, with whether or not you should wear makeup. If, if you're a person that wears makeup often, I, all of these things are going to be things that you're going to need to figure out. But in the end, yeah, you know, it's the people who embrace it and who just let their personality shine through that are going to be successful. So you need to find a way to embrace the things that maybe have originally driven you crazy, especially if it comes down to your, yeah, to your voice. It makes you unique. And it's why people will tune in and listen and and spend time with you. Isn't, you know, how perfect your set is or the <laughs> the exact cadence of what you're saying. It's really the confidence that you have and the passion that you bring and the value that you're delivering. Man, you guys remember United Colors of Benetton ads and then even more mm -hmm. recently, Apple ads where they went out of way to get uh, models with different features and highlight them. I think yeah. that's dope. And my middle sister, same thing, Katie, like she used to <laughs> always be like super afraid of the yeah. gap in her teeth. And now that's just part of her thing. And Tony is on your side too. So yeah, like whatever, man, like nobody really cares. If yeah. you're delivering the value that's going to help me uh, save 15% of my car insurance by switching to Geico, <laughs> I kind of don't care what you sound like and look like. I'm trying to save that car insurance loop. Okay, yeah. so a couple more quick ones I want to throw at you guys. Brain training apps, right? One mm. of my friends, John, John, he he worked on one called Element, I believe. Yep. But there's a bunch of brain training apps that you can go through. Those will really help you out with your verbal fluency. But I want to give you some exercises that you can do right away. So we're going to play a little game and I want everybody to play along and Katie, no, I'm not going to judge you on this, but <laughs> I feel judged. I, I, <laughs> judged already. <laughs> Let me get my garage band open. I okay. am going to purposely set this tempo to 60. Okay. So we're going to do a situation called fast. And this is where you can pick any letters you want when you're doing this at home people or in the beginning, you might even just start out with words. So I'm going to say a word and you try to bring up as much words that are associated with that within okay. 60 seconds. Now, okay. the reason why I play a metronome that sounds like this, if I can make it work. Play, dang it. <laughs> so the reason why you play a right, metronome is it allows you to do it on beat. If you can't keep up with this 60, this will make you get 60 out in a minute. But if you can't keep up with this 60, lower it to like 40, right? I okay. wouldn't go much lower than 40 because then that gets a little bit lazy, right? So right, I'll try. I would have picked some, I would even start with something that I know you're pretty knowledgeable about. Knowledgeable about. To, to, let's talk about verbal food. See on the day I can't speak. <laughs> what that we're knowledgeable about. Let's do something about publishing. So, how many words about publishing can you spit out in the next 30 seconds? Let me get my watch ready and go. Book, author, editor, publisher, illustrator, words, text. Reading. Oh, I can't hear the metronome anymore. Um, gosh. Uh, Amazon, sale, bookstore, independent publisher. Oh, this is hard. What am I at? Am I at 30 seconds? <laughs> um, Two, one. Pages. Okay. You see that though? Right? Now, I know for a fact, stop, stop playing. Dang it. I know for a fact that you know a lot about that subject. And, but when you ask to do it on, on, on speed, you get stuck, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what if you had to do that and then you just, okay, I write this number down and then you go more and you go more. Now, the first time you get it, yeah, you'll probably pull it under 17 because you're just getting used to the exercise. But yeah. if you do the exercise over and over again, and again, if you find yourself constantly not making it past 17 or 18, please go actually see a doctor. I'm not even tripping. That's just a real thing. Right. I, yeah. I bet you a dime against two fat boys. When Aubrey was going through recovering from her TBI, they probably did this test with her. Uh, Aubrey, if you did this test, please let me know something similar. Now, the, the first test is basic word association, which Katie just did. Now we're going to do basic word non associated. 
<laughs> okay? So in in way the way you do that is okay, let's say we're going to do car, right? Okay. So I would go car, seat, chair, baby, food, spill, messy, refrigerator, Texas, grill, vegetables, nasty. Oh Wait, God. so are each of those are each of those words associated to the one in front of them? Yeah, or or, okay. or closely. Yeah, so you're just moving it along the chain, right? So I, I mean, I can do that, this game pretty good. We do this in improv classes. They do this test all the not really test. It's a game. Yeah, they do it in improv. <laughs> in improv, they do it where you're passing it along to people. So yeah. you need something to do in the car with the children's. Do that. And the non-associated one is dope because you can't prepare, right? Yeah. And makes an awesome drinking game <laughs> ecam does not endorse the <laughs> sorry kid wait kid, kids with kids whiskey man with me so he's good Glad Very not true. so yes if you do that this is where you learn to think fast and quick right we mm -hmm. did it as kids in elementary with the hot potatoes right you, you mm -hmm. did the thing you move on the hot potatoes so doing a basic word association trying to spit out as many words as you can within 60 seconds that are related to the same thing so for me i'm gonna go car seat radio tires window engine oil transmission cassette a track trunk seat belt glove box manual manual transmission automatic <laughs> triptronic differential Do, doc could do this all day and i'm like panic all day long, mode all day, every day <laughs> right just you know yeah. what i'm saying well, because why i do this i do this yeah right like so what like, in sorry, your was, what in your no it's fine what in your so what is that doing as far as helping with um with verbal fluency so what is it what does practicing something like that do to help us as podcasters? Fluency is recall. Awesome. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the yeah. day, fluency is recall. When someone says to you, Katie, name me 10 things in the next 15 seconds that you miss about Canada. Tim, Tim Hortons, snow. Oh, see, like I, I, maybe I need to see a doctor. I can't, like I panic and can't think. <laughs> the, I panic and can't think see, past those that things. One, that one should be so simple for you because you lived majority of your life there. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to spit that out. And no, I don't think it's a doctor thing. I think this is a panic mode thing. <laughs> but you, you yeah. just get, get over it. And then now you'll learn that yeah. someone's going to ask you that question and this is how you kick butt at trivial pursuit and things yeah. of that nature because it's not about you didn't know it's about pulling it out quick nothing sucks more than to be in a trivia contest and the other person is answering and you know the answer but you get it out like slower yep so yeah, that's true mem memory recall that you guys remember simon burm, 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 burm. you know you gotta yep. press a little Simon alone will help you with this, right? I'm pretty good at Simon, actually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So get, 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 get into that thing. And um, it, this is funny. Now, I have to do some more research on this. I didn't really think about this. But everyone says that they get nervous. Yeah, I wonder. I know Johnny is just, Johnny in the chat for those listening uh, is agreeing that I got nervous. I, I'm tr honestly trying to think through like what is it in my head that that because I don't feel nervous. It's not like I think that like I'm not I'm not actually feeling nervous. I trust all of you. I trust Doc. I'm not feeling like I'm in a position. But even I like as that as I was trying to struggle to answer, I think it's like it's a time challenge. It's like I don't know if it's yeah, it's not a nervous thing it's it's somewhere... you want it you want to complete the. T it's for me it's just i want to complete the task, task and so i'm going through yeah. my mind going like what are those other things and i, I just can't recall them fast enough to complete the task it's the no, same no. way I, I have the same problem sometimes with podcast interviews many mm. times podcast interviewers will send questions in advance which is great I overthink that then, of course, but <laughs> but I get the questions in advance. But when they ask questions, there's always like a many podcasts have like a speed question round. I'm actually really good at that round. What I struggle with is if they ask a question that in my mind is not 
something that I think that they would ask or, or, or something I think is relevant to the conversation. I do pause and often have a hard time answering questions where I think in my head, I'm going through a, a process of making sure that what I say is relevant and helpful for the audience. And it, that slows me down. That's not what happened right now, but I think that that is what happens in those kinds of instances. Like if someone on a podcast has me on and they don't actually know exactly how well I'm doing things, like, or what I do on a regular basis, right? They're like, you're a marketing director. Tell us about your strategies for how you use social media. I know how to do that. It's not what I'm doing on a regular basis in Ecamm. So in my mind, I'm going through like, how do I relate that to Ecamm and be able to answer this question appropriately that would be valuable for people watching and also be marketing and letting people know more about the success of Ecamm. So I think that's what okay. slows me down in that instance. And maybe that's also some element of that is what slows me down when you just ask that question. It's like, what do I want to say? What am I pulling back up? What's relevant or not relevant? And I'm just not quite fast enough at doing that in my head. But you're right, re recall activities might help with that. Here's what it is for me and is what it is for most people. And I'm so glad that Tony said it. Yeah, Tony, we, yeah, Tony nailed it. We're, we're of the generation of fear of being wrong and getting yep. it wrong. But getting it wrong is, no, or look, no looking answer. stupid, quote unquote, so that's always my, yeah. In, in improv, when we do this, you can just stick in any word you want, even if it has nothing to do. In the middle of that whole thing about Canada, you could have said deep ocean swimming and it doesn't matter because you just got to get to 10, right? And then we would have, <laughs> we, would, we would have ejected the yeah. two bad ones and you still would have spit eight. But because of your fear of being wrong, because of your yeah. fear of being wrong, somebody once yep. said, if you say it three times, they'll listen to you because of your because fear of, your of being fear wrong. Of being you, wrong. You stop, yep. stop at four. So yeah. it would have been better for you to have two things that just didn't match and land at eight than getting stuck at four trying to be right. Yeah. yeah. Let that and marinate, Tim, folks. Let that <laughs> marinate. Okay. So when you're doing the fast game, another thing that you could do is name as many words as you can in 60 seconds that begin with the letter F. And if the first answer is in Fox, I'm mad at all of y'all. <laughs> I'm like fridge. <laughs> so we can next. Oh. You, can, you can do Fox twice because it's oh. different, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Katie, Katie one, is Marshall, and one is Judy. Actually, you can pull it up three times. Actually, no, Marshall and Judy is the same. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but yes, so you can do words that begin with F. And I guarantee you when people do this, somebody's going to say phone and freak out because they got it wrong but your brain associates it. So it's not wrong. It's still F, yeah, right? That's if true. you're trying to be semantic, yo, you're going to lose, right? Mm -hmm. So in the middle of doing a conversation, you guys watch me do it about 12 times a day. I don't care that I said something stupid. I can immediately fix it. Oh man, right? this is an activity that is built to destroy my brain. Cause I always care. I'm like, am I lying? Is this wrong? <laughs> no, you can immediately <laughs> like, fix I, it. Yeah. Oh. When, okay. Good, good. I am so, Katie, this is a great exercise. When you said that, right, and you weren't sure, guess what? We are live. We have pause. We have, I'm sorry, we have moderators. <laughs> we have pause. Otherwise, we have pause. We have my, yeah. please fact check that. So today I'm watching my lads, right? The Stratford Paddock. Sorry, that's a Manchester United thing. And he mentioned, uh, about uh, Julio Iglesias' kid. What's the younger one? Enrique, 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 Enrique Iglesias, right? Yeah. And because the kid, the people that are listening, they're younger. They remember him, but the other host remembers Julio, and yeah. they're like Julio, and it's like, yeah, that was Enrique's dad. And believe it or not, he was a goalkeeper at Real Madrid. And they're like, no way, you know, they only know him from of all the girls I've loved before. I traveled in and out my door. That's all they remember. They don't even remember that. So they thought he was straight lying. So he said, no, no, I'm gonna have my stat man go run a, a real quick. They looked it up. Yes, Julio Iglesias was a goalkeeper for Real Madrid back in the day. So it was legit <laughs> true fact. But oh. don't worry if you get it wrong. You have your Paula Raiders that can go fact check it. Or That's you true. can fact check it live while your other person's talking and say, hey, I made a mistake. Now. Proof or it positive. makes or it makes a really good story. I I did. Yes, or a second here's, video. Here's a an second embarrassing. Video. 
Here's a totally embarrassing story, everyone. I'm going to share this with you, even though it goes against my good nature to prove that I that I am going to be vulnerable for a minute. But I so Freddie Prince Jr. Hopefully, you know who Freddie Prince Jr. Yes, is. No, exactly. I'm a Freddie huge Prince I'm a huge movie geek, right? And I, so we just started our our movie podcast, and so we were we did last week's episode all about um, three iconic. 90s horror movies one of them being i know what you did last summer what you did last summer come on so we were talking all about freddie prince jr so over christmas break i watched freddie prince jr did a christmas like hallmark movie where he was like in this amazing movie it was really sweet super cute if you're into like cheese ball hallmark movies but it was an all like all spanish hispanic cast and freddie prince jr who i know and everyone should know He's Puerto Rican. He's got a Puerto Rican father. He's got a really famous father, right? Doc's going to yes. laugh at this. Doc is just going to um, pick on me for forever. Um, okay. I literally sent my best friend, who's my co-host of my podcast, a message. And I was like, how come they hired Freddie Prince Jr. for this? He's so white. And the whole the rest of the cast is not. <laughs> like, I don't believe that his mother is this like adorable Spanish-speaking woman making like all these like amazing dishes and she's totally and natalie was like freddie prince jr is hispanic i was like freddie prince jr is not hispanic he's the whitest guy we had this whole back and forth and i refused to double down on it and then she was like who's his who's his dad and i was like freddie prince he's oh wait a second <laughs> and I, I completely i i not only doubled down i tripled down and i still like i still show pictures and i was like okay but his mom is italian and he is incredibly white looking so but yeah it, in my horribly racist ridiculous moment <laughs> i completely failed at it I, you are right in that like i could have had fact checkers Thankfully, I had fact checkers behind the scenes to stop me from publicly saying yo, that on my podcast. That's but fun. yo, you're not you well, he's not you're not old enough to watch Tico and the Man. <laughs> but I knew him. I could literally visualize Freddie Prince before I even looked it up. And I like yo, and I've Tico and the Man was my Prince. favorite. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. it was my favorite show back in the day. That is so good. Sorry, Look, anyway, there's there's my moment of admitting that so I'm wrong. And you're right. My, fact -checking my thing is about Freddie is i won i hated him because he took my girlfriend buffy <laughs> so, you did. they're still together though they're so in love <laughs> isn't that dope no but i i love buffy i love buffy i'm uh, sorry sarah michelle geller smg for those of you who don't play along in the home game she was just super cool back in the hours really enjoyed all of her stuff so yeah that's so funny case oh my god all right yes, i'm gonna people. practice this game so i get better at it but i i you're right it i do think a lot of it game. comes from being a perfectionist not wanting no, to lie, not, not wanting to look cool. dumb, not wanting to fail. <laughs> like, yeah. Here's what's absolutely cool. You can play this with the Foxes. And right, I will. I they will. will be better in school for it. Oh, they'll be better than me, which will make me feel even worse. But I'll, but I'll get it's there. Okay, It'll be a good challenge. Because you're being a yeah. mom, right? And yeah. your kids, when you guys are, you know, riding up, to Albany or, you know, driving to someplace else, right? Uh, playing this in the car. I think we did it in the car a lot too, right? Um, we would play these kind of word associative games. Yeah. And for us, it was because coming from Esau kids, it helped, you know, everybody just get mm -hmm. better at speaking, right? Yeah. Also, one of the things, uh, this won't affect a lot of y'all, but some of the people in the chat remember back in the day as a person of color, right? People always tried to make like you were dumb. So we worked extra hard to have better vocabularies. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, you would take some of that ammunition away from people. So yep. I always did always did vocabulary stuff always scored really well in vocabulary tests and things like that always scored really well in spelling bees which is funny now because i can't spell for crap the computer definitely stole some of that <laughs> but i used to legit read the dictionary as a kid because awesome. i wanted to present better and i also went to a super melanin deficient uh private school <laughs> so i always felt like i had the I had to underhand in the first place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people in my house didn't talk like that because people in my house didn't always speak English, right? So I felt yeah. I was behind the eight ball. So yes, reading and expanding your knowledge, reading out loud completely helps out a lot because it helps you with your flow. Listening to people that have fantastic vocabularies and have a scratch thing around. It could be your phone, it could be whatever. When you learn a new word, 
study it, learn it, speak it, find how to use it in a use sentence, it. do the above, yep. like increase your vocabulary. Actually grab one of these vocabulary books. Um, do I have one down here? No, I don't, but there's these books you can get and they're always at the bookstore, like $4 because nobody buys them, <laughs> which is dumb. Uh, I can tell nobody buys them because whenever news people do interviews or when Jimmy Kimmel does interviews in the street, I, this is so mean and I'm super sorry. Our country is really dumb. Let's be straight up honest. Our country is really dumb, but we think we know everything. Mm -hmm. And I, when I see those, it's a reminder. I never want to get caught out like that. So if I'm ever asked on an interview or something, I want to be able to articulate my thing as beautifully as possible and never yep. freak out. And just from watching people on Jimmy Kimmel or people on the news say dumb stuff, I never <laughs> wanted to get caught. And what it was for me, this is funny. Years ago, Johnny Carson, University of Washington had won some kind of like um, football game against USC. And they were asking the players like real simple questions and they couldn't answer. And I was like, uh, you always think I was in like 11th grade when I saw that. And I'm like, I'm never going to get caught like that. Ever. Yep. So I've gone out of my way. So yes, definitely do those things. Uh, Toastmasters helps. And here's one more that's going to help you. Uh, free writing. Yes. Right? I used to Huge. do this thing called 750 words. Uh, 750words.com and just free writing. How does this work, people? Grab yourself one of these. This is a pen. <laughs> Grab yourself one of these. This is a pineapple. Pineapple. No, I'm joking. Just get a piece of paper and just let the brain come out. F your punctuation, F your sentence structure. Yeah. Just Don't let edit. that hand go. Yeah. No edits. Free write. And no, you cannot type this on your phone. And no, you cannot type this on the computer. It must be pineapple and pen and just go, just let the brain, just, you know, handwriting diarrhea on the paper. Yep. If you free write, you are letting out all of that stuff that's in your melon and it'll, it frees your, free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> Sorry. I definitely have <laughs> musical <laughs> Tourette's. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, I like Johnny said, we had a French English dictionary. Same, uh, yeah. And it really, yeah. really helped us. Oh, man, I realized that uh, you and Fulgens and Johnny can do a whole French podcast. I know. And you know what? French is one of those languages. So I, I grew up in Montreal and I grew up fairly bilingual. You have to in, in Montreal. But I haven't lived there now for almost 20 years at this point. So for me, I can still read French. I can watch French. I can consume any kind of you know French media or um you know, TV shows and radio, et cetera. But when someone says, say something in French, I have that same moment of like, what do I say? How do never, I say it? Am I going to say it right? Never lose I, that. Yeah. Please I stop guess. that today. Katie, as, as your, as your employee yelling <laughs> upwards or as your friend, please yeah. stop that. Do not yeah. lose that bilingual capability and kicking and screaming. Put the kids on it. Yep. Get the kids back into it. Part of you teaching it to them. It doesn't matter what the language is. I can tell you being polyglottonous, not gluten-free, um, <laughs> it really does expand your mind anyway because of the cultural difficulties in explaining things in certain languages. It uh, requires you to take a better look at culture even, and therein lies makes you a more adaptable person. Very true. So, I, it's, it's super funny. Um, my, my dad used to always do that to me because, you know, people would be freaked out that I could speak Korean. My dad would always say, say something Korean. And for Korean, I would kind of always freeze, but I never freeze in Japanese ever. And oh. I'll just, I'll just start talking Japanese in the middle of a damn podcast, like, like nobody's business. And it helps <laughs> the because script is just like dot, 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 when, dot. <laughs> when I go, when I go to Japan, one of the best compliments I ever get from people is you speak Japanese without a foreign accent. Wow, that's awesome. I, I go out of my way to do that because to this day, I will hear people that speak Japanese be like, konnichiwa. And it's like, not konnichiwa. There's two ends. It's konnichiwa. There's a, the double N is a glottal stop, right? You, it's konnichiwa. Bitches. Uh, so, um, yeah, like it's definitely one of those things. And that's why I'm always spazzing out about, you know, karaoke versus karaoke and yep. about sake versus sake. And it's because that level of 
again, verbal fluency in a foreign language. How I studied in Japan was I listened to music and watched movies because I wanted the tonality. So by all means, all of you guys that are multilingual, uh, Johnny, uh, maybe Nat Natalie, I don't know if you're bilingual or not, but your last name says so. <laughs> um, <laughs> everybody, everybody that's, that is bilingual in any way, shape or form in here. And no, Sally, swearing does not count as the other language. <laughs> You should at least know one swear word in every language. That's my policy. <laughs> See, Johnny said I spent two oh. years in Japan and can't speak Japanese. Johnny, yeah. oh my, we're going to fight about that when I come. Oh, but yes, it, I think it's very important at any cause to, yeah. if you have a bilingual capability because, of, you know, when you're a child or whatever, and maybe you don't use it now, please put it back in your rotation. Because yeah. one last thing, and that's where we're going to quit. I read this <laughs> somewhere. I have to double fact check it, but I read it somewhere that if whenever you're learning something new, podcasting, ecam, you know, whatever, if you also at the same time learn music or another language, you will mm. learn the original topic deeper, stronger, better, faster, because yep. there's something about language learning and music yep. learning that makes your brain connect dots faster. So even at your age, Paul, 88, if you were to pick up another <laughs> language, it repairs synapses. It's yeah. something about that because language is so important to survival. Read that back. Language is so important to survival that your brain will actually regrow broken sections as a way Crazy. of allowing you to survive it's also the reason why they come up with tests like woman man camera tv for people that are starting to get dementia they, they told us right away before they got sick like try to get their try to get their uh verbal fluency back because it helps repair portions of the brain that are dying so fun fact the average american speaks with only a 440 word vocabulary yeah, Do yeah, we know almost that. every song by heart. So you're so true about what you just said. Like, it is amazing the amount of song lyrics that most of us retain, that the second that the song starts, we know every single lyric or most, but I mean, it's impressive. So yeah, that I is think, my, I think that is my so musical true. Tourette's right, right there, yeah. right? So yeah. that's how I, that's my mom, she used to get so mad at me. She's like, how did you get a B in this? I was like, no, I mean, you know, like I studied whatever. She goes, how is it that you know every rap lyric in the whole freaking planet, but you got to be in history? Go yep. get the belt. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that was legit. That oh. was legit. All right, we got to we gotta wrap. We are over time. <laughs> yes, 100%. Anyway, gang, that was, uh, that was it. Uh, that was I don't awesome. think there was any questions that we didn't cover. Let me just double check real quick. I don't see anything big. Uh, you know, there's always the one that comes up every time. Like, how do you get better on camera? Be on camera. How do you get better at swimming? In the water. You cannot get better at swimming in the chair. You cannot be better on camera. Not on camera. That's just the yep. simplest answer. And that's going to irritate people because, yes, it's painful at some point until it's not. Like, I don't even think about it. Like, my camera in my studio is on 24-7. When I sit down, I am automatically on camera. Mm -hmm. I never turn it off. It's just on. When I sit at my computer, I'm looking at the ECAM program window and I'm there. So that just, so just leave it on. Let's work all day with it looking at you and you'll get over it. Yep. Um, let's see. Absolutely Always true. be recording. Plus when you need to make a short, it's going to come to yeah. you. Oh yeah. You mentioned that thing about like fixing mistakes or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Check out Seth. Um, see, I just did it. SNL. Seth. <laughs> Green. It's the, that's no, my only no. association. Myers, Myers, Sorry. Myers, Myers, Myers. Oh, Myers. Seth Meyer. Oh man. Seth, you know, Seth Meyer does a weekly correction show where he goes and corrects all the things that he said wrong. The there reason you know. why he's going to say things wrong is because he's talking at a hundred miles an hour for the my log for the monologue. monologue. Oh my goodness. He's talking a hundred miles an hour for the monologue. And because of that, of course, he's going to accidentally say things wrong. And he started this correction show because the Lego community went nuts because he said Legos with an S, which is a no, no, never say Legos with an oh. S. You will get hurt. They will plant them on your floor at night when you sleep. Uh, <laughs> please don't do that. That, that. that pisses us off, right? That's just the thing, right? So from that, he got so much views out of the correction show. He does it every week now. 
So it gives you a way to make content. It gives you a short or something that you can do to make content. Hey, yeah. on my show, I misquoted a fact. I want to make sure that I cover it for you. Guys, this is the amount of uh, penguins that there are in the state of Hawaii. I just wanted to let you know, yes, we do have penguins in Hawaii. They're not Two. just for cold areas. <laughs> Oh no, we, there's a couple of hundred. I know, of them. I know. But yeah, yeah, penguins are not just a frozen bird. Most people don't know that, but you know, think. So you can cover it, and there's a good extra piece of content. You can make a newsletter article about it or whatever. So anyway, Katie, I hope this helps you. I know it's super help helpful. Some people in the chat. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We did it. <laughs> My my uh my flow just went out the window. Oh no! <laughs> here, here, I got this. This is you can you can listen and learn more about the flow at flow.ecam.com. We are, as Doc says, wherever podcast getting is good. You can scan this awesome QR code, or again, go to flow.ecam.com to be able to find us. We record live every single Tuesday. I always want to say Thursday. Tuesday. <laughs> Normally at 12 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube. If you want to be part of our live studio audience or catch our replay videos, they're available here as well. We have a volley. So if you want to ask questions in video format to practice your video, you can record asynchronous video using volley, completely free, super fun. Swing on over to find us on volley. We are sponsored by our incredible friends over at Descript. It's a really, really great way to not only grab your transcript, to repurpose your videos, clip them up and use them in all kinds of different places, but also to realize how many times you say, um, like, or you know. And the more you click through and listen, the more you visually see how many times you're saying these kinds of things, the more intentional you are with how you speak the following time. So I'm now aware of that and I'm trying a lot harder <laughs> to say it less. So Descript, it makes it just so easy to be able to do that. And it's helpful for today's topic. So thank you for being you know, sponsors, you know. team. <laughs> you, know. you know, it's really that helpful, you know? <laughs> that was perfect, Katie. That was perfect. I want to remind you guys, you can go play Word Association in Discord in the rec room. Like it's- Oh, please just do. Invite, come hang with me. Invite somebody to come in the Discord yeah. and just practice in there. You guys can work with each other. You can do timing games, whatever. It yep. will make you will all get better. Trust me on this. That game alone will make you much better at this. So I appreciate yeah. you guys. Flow Riders out.